The United States is the greatest economic and military superpower in the history of the world, and they are our neighbor. The U.S. is responsible for $1.2 trillion of our trade. We trade almost twice as much with the Americans as we trade with the rest of the world combined. Trade with the U.S. is 40 percent of our economy. President Trump yesterday made an unjustified threat of a 25 percent tariff on our already weak and shrinking economy. Justin Trudeau and Christia Freeland were surprised, amazingly. Everyone else knew something like this could be coming because President Trump had been talking about it for years on the campaign trail. Yet 20 days ago, Christia Freeland said, don't worry, Canada will be fine. Apparently, neither she nor Justin Trudeau were following what the incoming president was saying. And now, we must take account and we must be honest with our unprecedented weakness. After nine years of Prime Minister Trudeau, our GDP is smaller than it was when he took off, per capita, is smaller than it was when it took off, he took office. In fact, our per capita GDP has dropped more than any other G7 country since the year before COVID. We have the most indebted households. We've had the worst housing inflation. A quarter of our people are in poverty. Two million people line up in food banks. Food prices have risen 37 percent faster in Canada than in the United States of America. Our economy is teetering on the brink of collapse. And now we face this renewed threat. We need a plan, a plan to put Canada first on the economy and on security. So to start with, on the economy, I'm calling on Prime Minister Trudeau to put partisanship aside and in the spirit of Team Canada to accept that we can, he cannot go ahead with quadrupling the carbon tax to 61 cents a litre. This was a, an irresponsible policy to begin with. But combining this kind of crippling energy tax increase with potential tariffs from Donald Trump would push our economy into a nightmare and a tailspin. So let's put partisanship aside and axe the tax. Second, the Prime Minister has to put aside partisanship and in the spirit of Team Canada cancel his energy cap which would see Alberta and Saskatchewan produce 35 percent less energy at a time when we need those jobs. It is our biggest industry and our biggest export. The incoming American president says he wants to cut gas prices in half. Well, the only way to do it will be to import more clean Canadian energy, so the Prime Minister has to stop this assault on our biggest industry. Next, he has to cancel all tax increases tax increases on work, investment, and making stuff in Canada. Finally, he needs to renew and restart the commitment to end the softwood lumber tariffs and the Buy America policies, just like Stephen Harper was successful in doing, even though Justin Trudeau has not been able to do that under three presidents and nine years. On security, uh, about a week ago, Justin Trudeau admitted that he broke our immigration system, and that brings new challenges. His own published documents show there are 4.9 million people here temporarily that are supposed to leave by December 31st of next year, 13 months from now. 4.9 million people. We asked what the plan was to track their departures, and yesterday his immigration minister said, we're just going to take people at their word. He admits that there have been two ISIS terrorists allowed into our country. What is the plan to protect our security and reinstate sovereignty over who is in our country? Military. Justin Trudeau has demolished our military with poor decisions botched procurements, and wasted money. One thing he could do today 
is announced that his planned billion dollar cut to the military is cancelled. And then present a real plan to reallocate money away from lower priorities towards rebuilding our military and reinforcing our military security over North America. And finally, on drugs. I don't want to stop drug overdoses to please Donald Trump. I want to stop drug overdoses so that there's not one more mother with her face buried in a pillow sobbing that she just lost her kid after 47,000 other Canadians have died. That's more than we lost in the Second World War. A 200% annual increase in drug overdose deaths have resulted from Judge Justin Trudeau's radical liberalization of drugs. Justin Trudeau must put partisanship aside, not just for the sake of Team Canada, but for the sake of our people, and fully reverse his liberalization of drugs. Ban them, prosecute those who traffic in them, secure our borders against the illegal importation of fentanyl ingredients, put people in treatment and recovery to bring our loved ones home drug-free. That is necessary now more than ever. Look, President Trump has the right to put his workers and his nation's security first. I will put Canada's workers and Canada's security first. We need a Prime Minister with the strength and the smarts, the brains and the backbone to stand up for this country, to rebuild our security, our military and our economy. That is what I will do. Police Let's bring it home. That's a nice idea. It's a very nice idea. We live next door to the biggest economic and military superpower in the history of the world. Um, we can fantasize about other trade partners, but I'm interested in reality. We've been fantasizing for the last nine years, and look where it has got us. What we actually need to do is stand up for our economy by axing taxes, unleashing free enterprise, having a massive boom in our energy and resource production and standing up for our country against unfair tariffs abroad. Would you be willing to retaliate? If necessary. You're asking the Prime Minister to put aside his partisanship. Will you put aside yours and join the government in a Team Canada approach? I, I'm making nonpartisan suggestions today. But let me be clear. We don't need as a spectacle of a bunch of politicians sitting around tables meeting and holding photo ops. I know that would be a wonderful spectacle for all of you. You would all enjoy that kind of interpersonal the theatrics. Um, but what we really need is an action plan with tangibles. So bottom line, Trudeau's got to ax the carbon tax. He's got to lift the production cap on Canadian energy. He's got to rebuild our military and secure our borders. That is a real plan to protect our economy and our security and put Canada first, and that's more important than photo ops and meetings between politicians. What do you think, of, what do you think, of, what do you think about the idea of Canada striking a separate bilateral agreement with the U.S., separate from Mexico? Do you endorse that idea? Canada first. I, let's put it this way. One, I only care about Canada. I want to put our country first. Two, America is responsible for over 60% of our trade. We trade more with the U.S. than we do with the rest of the world combined. I will do what is necessary to preserve and protect that relationship above all others. Has your party decided if you support them? And can you also respond to the demands from the Bloc and NDTP to expand it even further? So, first of all, uh, we will make our final decision and formalize it tomorrow at our caucus meeting, as always. But with our GDP collapsing, with a half trillion dollars pouring out of our country, 
and with Canadians lined up at food banks, our priority is not to save you 10 cents on a bag of potato chips right before quadrupling the carbon tax on your heat, housing, gas and groceries. What we need is a real common sense plan to slash bureaucracy and waste in order to bring down taxes, inflation and interest rates. And we, will answer, we also know that on the checks, Justin Trudeau has said when he was asked about checks not long ago, he said if you give out checks, you drive up inflation by exactly the same amount. If you have an economy with 10 apples and $10, it's a buck an apple. If you double the number of dollars in the economy to 20 and you still only have 10 apples, well now it's $2 an apple. You're not actually increasing purchasing power by printing money, borrowing cash and sending out checks. What, what, that, what that has done after nine years of Trudeau has given us the worst inflation in 40 years, the worst housing pri price inflation in the G7. We have people living in poverty, they can't find homes. We need a real common sense plan to permanently ax the carbon tax, ax the sales tax on new homes so that Canadians can earn a powerful paycheck that buys affordable food, gas and homes in safe neighbourhoods. Nous avons un vrai, besoin d'un vrai plan pour couper les taxes et impôts et permettre les gens de gagner des plus grands chèques de paie et pension qui achètent de nourriture et de logements dans les communautés sécuritaires. Merci.